so many applications, so many phone interviews, and a handful of in-person interviews, yet still no job offer in hand. What's the deal? It's time to face the cold hard facts. I know so many talented individuals who are hitting the market trying to land their first shot at a UX job. They're hustling, they're busting their butt to land that first gig. Hundreds of resumes submitted, dozens of phone interviews, and maybe even a couple of in-person interviews. Yet after each of those interviews, they're hearing the same unfortunate news. We've decided to go in another direction. It's easy to roll your eyes and cuss under your breath each time this happens. In fact, I've even had one candidate respond to that email with, sucks to hear this news again, seems like it's all I hear. I get it, it's tough slugging out there, and I hate having to tell people this. But instead of complaining about the employer, look inward at what's happening. You see, complaining about the employer won't get you anywhere. It's completely out of your control. What is in your control is looking inside at what you might be falling short at. Facing the sometimes painful and brutal facts are just what you might need to improve in a certain part of your game. You might need to improve in some of the soft skills I talk about all the time. You might need to improve in your delivery of your skill set. But how would you know if you're too afraid to ask and too arrogant to think that maybe the reason you're not getting the job is actually you? Now, don't get mad at me. Hopefully my track record of a year and a half of podcasting has shown that I'm here to build up and not tear down. But experience has shown me that So many candidates are afraid to ask the tough questions. Why won't you hire me? In fact, if I were to guess, I'd say only 40% of candidates ever email me back and ask for feedback on what they could do to improve. And of that 40%, I can tell you only half of them even care to get honest feedback. I've set a rule for myself that during every interview, I take detailed notes on what I think is going well and what I think they might be struggling with and where they could improve. For the most part, I love to share what they did well during the interview, regardless if they get the job or not. But I won't share the negative unless you ask for it. I don't want to be the guy who gives unwanted critique. When it's unwanted, it flies right over their head anyways. If you want feedback on where you could improve, ask. And ask with real desire to take the feedback and work on it. Now, the next thing I expect you to say is, I am asking, but I never get feedback or a response. I'm sorry. Some hiring managers get too caught up in the fixing their situation that they're not focused on helping you fix yours. To the hiring managers listening, come on. Here's a tip for actually getting feedback. Simply asking an email follow-up, is there anything I can do to work on or improve upon, is only going to elicit a non-response. Or even if they do respond, they'll probably just respond with a kind answer that says something like, I really think you did great. We just decided to go with another candidate. This response is in part because people don't want to come across as mean. And without a good relationship with you, they might fear their response comes off mean, even if there is something they think you could improve at. So instead, ask something like this. I felt like during the interview, I was doing X well, but I also felt like Y could have been presented better. Do you agree with that assessment? Any advice for me? This shows me that you're really interested in getting feedback to improve. You've also opened the gate for feedback by being the first one to critique. I think the hiring manager who responds will now be more likely to respond and give real feedback. I know in this scenario, it would definitely elicit a thoughtful and honest response from me. Once you've found a way to receive that feedback, approach the feedback as you would with any UX problem. Seek to understand it, research it, and create a plan to solve the problem. The next time you get into an interview, Hopefully you've fixed that problem, and you'll know. You'll know if you're able to adequately address the previous feedback. Regardless though, at the end of that interview, you'll do the same thing. You'll send a follow-up email that will get the hiring managers to respond with their honest feedback and continue to improve. Do this process over and over again, and you'll land a job. Most people aren't doing this, and therefore even unintentionally or subconsciously, they're just hoping that someone doesn't see their inadequacy and just takes a chance on their talent. Do more, look inward, get the feedback that those employers might have for you and create a plan to get better. It takes a lot of courage to take that honest feedback. Sometimes it might be 
you talk too long and didn't engage the interviewers. Sometimes it might be you mumbled through your presentation, or maybe you just didn't bring in the energy. Sometimes it might just be your breath stunk or something stupid like that. It's a quick fix. Brush your teeth, chew some gum, and you'll land the next job. Regardless, check your ego at the door, humble yourself for the feedback, and then work to improve where you might need it. That's it for Design Today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you can apply it, and I really, really do hope you land the job the next time around. Good luck. Let me know if you've got questions, and stay tuned next week for another episode of Design Today.